Now, if you don't, aren't familiar with Sarah Silverman's podcast, she is one of the funniest comics. She had the Sarah Silverman show. She was on SNL. There's a really great clip from that show, by the way, that uh, maybe people want to put out there. Uh, it, let's just say her pigmentation is a little bit darker than usual in that clip. Yes, that was that was a good gag. <laughs> that, was, that was great. That yeah. was a pretty funny gag. And her ex-boyfriend, Jimmy Kimmel, has one of those clips, too. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're both hilarious comics. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, and Hollywood loves them both. So whenever I check in on a comedian's podcast, I think, oh, is this going to be like Tim Dillon? You know, something that's just like really fucking funny and yeah. absurd. You don't know where she's going to go with stuff. And uh, what she likes to do is take voicemails. You know, we do voicemails, too. On yeah. WTP, if you stick around to the end, we, we play your voicemails. She likes to do it right up front. So she's going to get right started with the voicemail segments. You left me a message. See, it's already funny now and I'm fun. She's looking... Let's hear some voice. Oh, she's being cute and fun, and smiley. All right, let's go, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. This is Sarah from New York. Uh, I called you once when I was pregnant <laughs> about two years ago, and I asked you what the reason was for your last cry. Now I'm calling because I'm wondering. Um, I've noticed that you have a very healthy relationship with death and with grief <laughs> we're off to a good start <laughs> the last time i called you I asked you why you were crying yeah yeah no I'm, I'm saying like wow you do really good job with death and grief you're yeah. killing it over there well, yeah. <laughs> reach out to my one of my favorite comedians to see what they think about death and dying yeah. and crying how do you have a good relationship with death i mean sarah silverman from what i've seen and witnessed i think she's clinically depressed so yeah. the fact that someone's patting her on the back going, you're doing a good job with life. I'd be like, oh, well, not so fast there. I mean, you don't know anyone who's doing better than this. <laughs> she seems like she's not doing all that well. And so Sarah addresses that. And actually, I was surprised that she said that because I, I agreed. Thank you. I Look, yeah, you may notice that I have a healthy relationship with, with death and grief. Um, but I will remind you that you see me for a little less than an hour a week. <laughs> And I'm pretty much um, my best self. Oh, no. During those times, these times. <laughs> oh, my God. As opposed to producer Chris, who puts his worst self out there in every episode. Yeah, he's right. a great guy off air. We're oh, no, he's, he's, a, he's a star. But when we're we here. Get the microphone away uh, from him. Yeah, yeah. I just think that's so funny that this this is her version of acting like she's dealing well with life. Like She must be a mess. She hasn't combed right. her hair in three days. <laughs> yeah, when well, that camera wearing gets her, turned she's off. She's wearing her smart gold glasses. Yeah, no, this is, she's really crushing it. Yeah, But yeah. she's saying that she's faking it. Yeah. It's like, well, yeah, I'm here. You know, I, make, I make it seem like I handle these things well. No, you don't. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> Amish Space Force says Hollywood needs to be bulldozed into the sea. Let's at least warn the Blats before yeah. we do that. Look, we'll, we, can, we can head down to my in-laws in Orange County. We'll be fine down Okay, there. good. Just let me know that the bulldozers coming. Because my buddy Larry Blinder has officially gotten out of there. So as, as my friends leave there, oh, okay. I'm more and more with the bulldozer theory. Yeah. Well, I'm showbiz adjacent, kind of like the horse and the cow. Yeah. So I kind of need to be at least kind of close. But, okay. Yeah. Well, now that uh, Dick Masterson has all these roles in uh, Netflix shows, I think he has to be there now, too. So this is um, you and Dick are buddies now. We're supposed to uh, have, what, uh, a, a three-fifths of a tab of acid and go to a Dodger game? Right. So, yeah, that's yeah. right. It was very specific. It was very, yeah. It was like, <laughs> not, but not more than that. I'm like, all right, all right, I won't. That, and, that's uh, some ruler you got yeah, to get out. Definitely to, the uh, metric side. Yeah, you gotta after they had uh, the the big, uh, like the Pride Night there, they had a lot of people blocking traffic into the stadium. Oh, we talked about beat. that. Yeah, and I was like, oh, we really should have dropped acid that night. That's yeah. the night we should have gone, but uh, we missed it. So maybe next Pride Night. Next Pride Day. I don't know if you know this, but... Um, the Dodgers play home games all the time. But we You're like, ah, oh, damn, I missed a baseball game. Oh, no, I when know. will I see the Dodgers now? There are like four day games a year, you know? So uh, I, I, I'm waiting for that. You know, basically, I'm waiting for Dick. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to buy the ticket. <laughs> right, can somebody cut that like, their head? Be like, hey, can you please cut that, <laughs> clip that for me. Damn it. It's done. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> it's already done. We have to raise this off. <laughs> all right. Guys, I don't know if I've set this up well, but comedian Sarah Silverman, everybody. But yeah, I've had a, a a lot of people, unfortunately, die in my life. Close, close, close people. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. That's terrific. 
<laughs> Sarah's the best, isn't she? Whenever I'm feeling down, I tune into Sarah's show and I'm like, yeah, I should kill myself. Yeah. Yeah, actually. All these crazy thoughts in my head are correct. <laughs> it's not worth it. Yeah. Unless she has hilarious bits like, uh, oh, I had a I had a nightmare that a baby died of crib death. And oh, my gosh. So much funny stuff that she has that she could share. Some of her greatest hits. Yeah. I should mention, I didn't even pull the clip. But the way this episode starts off is check out Sarah's new comedy special streaming on Netflix starting June whatever. Oh, boy. So she's got a comedy show coming up, and this is how she's promoting it. And uh, it just keeps getting better and better. I'm more inclined to watch it now that I've seen these clips. Yeah. If you had told me last week she had a comedy special. You'd be like, ah, whatever. But now you're like, wow, this is going to be dynamite. You know, and with my parents dying last month, um, that that last three weeks with them – was just, um, I was consumed with sadness, just con- my entire being. And That's some good stuff. Of course, whilst all of that is going on, I'm also, well, and all three of my sisters, all of us, all hands on deck, are just doing nonstop work. You don't think about all the logistics that come with a loved one dying. You know, um, dealing with the hospital, dealing with hospice workers, payments, what's covered by this and what's not and what in mortuary and the the mortuary and the reaching out to their friends the best we could, which we whiffed in a lot of ways. This is six minutes into the latest episode. I got to like go through and find like, where's one where Sarah's talking about some crazy (laughs) shit. I just looked at the latest episode six minutes in. Her parents just died. By the way, thanks for dying. It really made a lot of work for me. I'm so busy doing this podcast for one hour every week. No, I have to reach out to their friends, which by the way, I did not do a good job of. (laughs) She should team up with uh, Hannah Gatsby. Seriously. All right. So, She's going to talk about something she, a conversation she had with her shrink. And the shrink sounds a little bit like a quack to me, but apparently her and her sisters decided to have a picnic at their parents' gravesite. It sounds completely normal, right? Yeah. <laughs> That's what people do, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> That's a weird place. Did for they a get a food truck? Because that, that's. <laughs> yeah. There's a bounce house. Yeah. My shrink said something really great last, last week. Because he, he, we're going to go. Um, do a picnic at their grave site, you know, and, um, and, uh, this weekend and, and, but, he, and, and my shrink said, and he was quoting someone else, I think, but he's like, when you go visit your loved one at the cemetery, just know they are in the car with you on the way there and they leave with you when you, you know, on the way back home. And, um, so you don't need to go. The grave site <laughs> is just where their, their bones are. Right. <laughs> Seems I, like someone's the expert there. I know. I know, like. She's like, now my street didn't did come up yeah. with this. This is yeah. pretty impressive stuff. Yeah. I think he heard it from someone else. <laughs> <laughs> An older shrink. Do, do you know that the dead people don't actually live down there? <laughs> like that's, yeah. That's uh, not their permanent residence. Agree to disagree. I've seen Night of the Living Dead. Right? Okay. I, I know how it works. Yeah. I've seen the thriller video. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> there is precedent for this. So what's funny is that all of this came from a caller saying she handles grief really well. Yeah. And she's having a picnic. <laughs> Which, by the way, she's only proved how well she's handling grief. I don't know. Also, if your parents die, do you have to do your podcast a month later? You know, I mean, we're not all dead inside. We could take You could take a little time. That I would be fine, Sarah. I know. I know you have to promote your Netflix special. Well, don't get me wrong. That's yeah, important. Yeah. You know what? She'll take off next month. Yeah. Right. Yeah. After the special's out. <laughs> all right. So let's get another voicemailer. Because the voicemailers are really what gets things rolling on the show. And if you have a great voicemailer, we're going to get a great segment. Well, you also don't have to prep your show if you only play voice. It's like Super Chats. It's, it's right. just the old-fashioned version of Super Chats. Yeah, you know yeah. what? That's That's a good point. <laughs> Although these people would never give her five bucks no. to her, for her to hear this. Each of them would ask her for five yeah. bucks. It's like, I'll, yeah, I'll give you a voicemail for five bucks. Hey, Sarah. Um, I... I'm 24 years old and I have been self-harming since I was 13. Um, More specifically cutting. I'm hoping that people who would be triggered by that click out when they hear me say self-harm. Sweetie. I can't stop. And um, I feel like a child. Like I have a child problem. 
You are a child. You're leaving a voicemail for a mentally ill comic to solve a mental disorder. Grow up. So she said in that voicemail that she's 24. So I'll admit that uh, as that voicemail went along, she started sounding a lot hotter. Oh, yeah. By the end, I was like, do they give out these numbers that people leave? With I, I could probably fix her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure. Pretty sure I Pretty can sure help she her can come out. to the Dodger game with Dick Masterson and I and everything will be fine. I would not have gotten that far. So I curate all of our voicemails. People sometimes think they're talking to Chris or something. You're talking to me. I wouldn't have gotten that far through the voicemail. Uh, Carl, I just wanted to let you know that. All right, that's enough of that. Okay, we're so we're doing a comedy you show You realize here. that after this episode, you're going to get eight voicemails like that that start <laughs> the same way. If you cut yourself, please call into where this podcast The guy from the Bronx, he's going to be talking about, <laughs> Carl, I've been self-harming myself for like 40 years. <laughs> I gotta cover my arms up. It's embarrassing over here. It's like a kid's disease or something. <laughs> All right, that I will accept, <laughs> especially if it's true. Well, let's see what Sarah's uh, response is to this because it does not disappoint. It's probably gonna be funny. <laughs> She's a comedian. I don't know about this. She's like, if you watch my special, it'll leave you in stitches. <laughs> you think you're cut up now? <laughs> I'm a cut up. Hey, <laughs> watch out, everyone. <laughs> right, by the way, if that's what Sarah did, I'd watch the show oh, religiously. Yeah. Yep. She, she just, just does a spin take when she's listening. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jim Fortney comes out. You're cutting yourself when you're 12. You're going to cut yourself when you need some attention from a classmate. What did you do? Post it on Facebook. About- <laughs> this <thing> writes itself. <laughs> All right, let's see how Sarah handles this. We know we know how we would handle it. Florentine would handle it. So she we should probably that. call Florentine and ask him. We should let's probably watch her right. first. Yeah. I don't know about this stuff, really, but um, we'll stop her from talking. It's about interesting it. you said. I feel like a child. Like there's a child problem, and you know what? One, it's not, but two. It is. <laughs> <laughs> no, the guy, Sarah. Thank you. I like that. It's okay to say you're not qualified to deal with this sort of thing. Like she literally could just be like, "I don't know what that is." Yeah. Get help. Talk to someone. Talk to a professional. Join a group. Whatever you got to do. But it's also like I don't know about that because when I was young, I was hot and I had friends. So yeah. I didn't need to cut myself. Right. So. And my cousin Harrison Young, <laughs> he's pretty popular too. <laughs> Although you know he does play a baseball game by himself in the living room, so maybe he needs help. Wasn't that incredible? <laughs> well, then he heard that he heard a couple of cats. I have so many questions about that. If if he would videotape him playing one of these games, yes. yes. I'm That's all I'd watch. Yep. It's the only thing I'd ever watch ever again. If you put that up against the Stuttering John special. I might have to, might have to peek over to right. the picture of the yeah. picture. Yeah. Maybe that's what I'll play instead if John doesn't show up. That's not a bad idea. All right. So she's she's not qualified for this. She just said it's not a child's problem. And also it is. <laughs> not a great start, but uh, it's not going to stop her from continuing on and explaining what she thinks. This is where I would go. I would search and then I would give you commas to say in between words. <laughs> I've recently learned that commas are not read by uh, our computers. Well, she just learned how search engines work. <laughs> Maybe she's not the great and powerful Oz we think she is. <laughs> she's just over there Googling shit. She just found out about Google. Until last month, she was still using AltaVista and WebCrawler. <laughs> so here's a question for Sarah that might be appropriate for future voicemailers. Hey, I came up with a setup for a vagina joke, and I need a punchline. <laughs> That's the the question that she can answer right there. That's what she's good with, not like self-cutting and mental issues. So she's going to explain what she thinks might help this woman. When I feel extreme anxiety or rage, boy, I love to just run and run. I'm lying. I'm a power walker. I don't run. But sometimes I run. Um like I live near a hill and boy, I've just been really ragey and frustrated and just gone and just run as fast as I can up that hill until I can't anymore. And it just, boy, it helps. Now the part she's leaving out is she's running up the Hollywood Hills to Johnny Depp's house to get high. <laughs> that's, that's why it helps so much. I just run and run until I find a drug dealer. <laughs> Oddly enough, Johnny just leaves the key under the mat. You can get right in. <laughs> There's a hill by my help my house. Wow, humble brag. Look at you. You live near a hill? That's Hollywood for you. Good stuff. All right, so let's get to the uh let's diagnose this together. Maybe you've got some like shame around um your depression or your sadness, your hurt, and and our instinct when we are hurt 
is to make someone else feel that hurt. And I think with people who self-harm, you're your own someone else, you know? Would you say that's true? I don't know. This is potentially a very ignorant theory. I'm not sure. Well, it's also (laughs) harmful. She's talking out of her ass as someone who obviously needs real professional help and making shit up. It seems like a bad strategy on this one. Yeah, but what's the worst that could happen, Carl? You know, I mean, what, what could these people possibly do if they take sex? She's out of the way. They have caller doesn't call in anymore. I can't figure it out. <laughs> she must <you>. be better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's a real stupid point. This might be the dumbest thing she's ever said. And Edith, it's so funny because we hate that life is a roller coaster, and yet we pay money to ride roller coasters. <laughs> you know, like there's a real love hate vibe. Um, well, that's retarded. It's a metaphor, Sarah. Yeah, yeah. It's a metaphor. When, when people say life's a roller coaster, they're not also going, Wee! Yeah. <laughs> I live on a roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> fucking idiot. She's like, isn't that crazy how that works? Yeah. Like, we like roller coasters. I mean, yeah, the, the difference has nothing to do with when you ride a roller coaster, you've planned to do it. Yeah, and then yeah. you get off. Yeah, that's like, on. oh, boy. I sure got wet on Splash Mountain. I mean, not anymore. But, you know, back when Splash Mountain was a thing and you get wet on. My life is more like the teacups, but, you know, I don't live a very interesting life. So what are you going to do? <laughs> Same old shit, round and around. All right. Here's the, the last clip that I have here. Um, I guess Sarah heard a voice in her head. You know, listen, I only just heard your your beautiful, vulnerable, brave, honest voice. And I love you. Aren't you lying? No. In fact, aren't you a liar? No more questions, Your Honor. (laughs) So I set that up incorrectly. Maybe Ed will help me out with that in post. But basically what she's saying is this person who wants to cut herself, she heard her voice. She's like, and I love you now. And I don't think that's how that works. I don't no. think that's how love works. I you, love her now, but I don't think. Yeah, I know <laughs> you're you're in love. I'm sure going to try and find her. Listen, it's not about hearing someone's voice. It's that knowing that they listen to your podcast. You know, if someone's just like, Carl, I like your podcast. I'm like, I love you now. Yeah, that's fine. That's, that's fine. all it takes. Yeah. You don't even have to like it. Just the fact that you listen. But hearing a voice. Yeah. Especially a sobby, weepy, <laughs> whiny voice like that. Who are these podcasts? W-A-T-P.